Oh, you didn't think we were done, did you? What is up everyone and welcome back to Men vs. Movies, I'm Griffin as always. If this is your first time checking out the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button for more movie and television related content on a weekly basis. So if for some reason you guys are unaware, we recently interviewed film composer Lauren Balfe who recently scored the hit film, the film of the summer I might add, Mission Impossible Fallout. If you have not checked out that interview, you can do so by clicking the link right here. It was a delightful discussion. We delved not only into Mission Impossible Fallout, but his other works as well. But the problem was we couldn't get too specific when it came to Fallout, and Brody and I had several questions that we wanted to delve into, but really couldn't get around it without going into spoilers. So, after Brody and I saw the film, we came back, we reconvened with Lorne, and we delved into those spoilery thoughts that we wanted to discuss with him. And there are some really interesting points that Lorne makes here, especially when he starts talking about the first piece of music he wrote for the film. Anyways, enough chit chat from me. Enjoy our Mission Impossible Fallout spoiler discussion with composer Lorne Balf. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Men Vs. Movies. I'm Griffin, as always, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Mr. Brody Saravelli. Brody, how are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm 12 hours out of walking from the, out of the theater and I'm uh, still shaking a little bit. So, <laughs> <He's still> at, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll oh see my how gosh. Uh, my 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 you know my soul recovers. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. I had similar feelings walking out of that movie as well. So <laughs> we actually have another treat here for you. We're going to be having a spoiler conversation regarding Mission Impossible Fallout with the composer of the film, Lorne Balfe. Now, if you guys haven't done so already, be sure to check out the full interview we had with Lorne last week. It was so great. Uh, it was a very insightful conversation as well. And we discussed not only Fallout, but some of his other works. So um, be sure to hit that up. But without further ado, let's get into this film. Lorne, seriously, congratulations on Fallout. It was was absolutely phenomenal how are you today I, i'm i'm fantastic hearing that you you still got the shakes <laughs> that's that, that's a good way to uh start a conversation mm -hmm. absolutely yeah oh my god i was hoping i'm, I'm able to like sort of function <laughs> now that i've like watched it oh my god no, no yeah. it's it's yeah. um i think i think it's it's all it's so exciting now that it's out and that and and that people are enjoying it mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because i think there's always that there's a well you know guys know what it's like a, a movie can get a lot of hype yeah and, yeah and build up and it doesn't naturally deliver so it's, it's lovely to to um hear that people are just really enjoying it yeah well that, yeah. that was like one of the things i was talking to brody about last night was like i'm not usually one for like jumping on like this insane amount of hype when it comes to films um I, you know i want to check it out and make sure it really is that good and whatnot but like i i've seen the movie twice now i saw it once regular at, for my my early screening and then i i was able to see it in uh in dolby um oh, last wow. night which for a sound from a sound perspective and music and everything that just blew my mind but um I, it, it really is like as good as people are saying, if not better. Like for me, I put it up there with one, as one of like the best action movies ever. Probably up there with I mean, like like a Fury Road or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. but um. That's yeah, a, that's yeah. a big statement, but, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, just, it, it. Slap that on the box. Right, yeah. yeah, there you go. You can throw that on there. Uh, but um, but speaking of uh, of Fury Road, interestingly enough, because the, the two share some some similarities. Like, there's like such a driving force in in both films. Um, and, and much like with uh, Junkie Excel's score in Fury Road, your score nicely complements. Um, the film really immerses you into the situations and the peril and, and, and such. But um, I, I, one, something that's always fascinated me is just how are you able to keep up the tension and the intensity, uh, especially in music for that long without like kind of tipping over a little bit? Oh, um, how do you do that? Uh, goodness knows. I think, I think you, do, <laughs> you, 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 you have to keep stepping back and, and, and looking at the bigger picture. Because I, th I think that a lot of time, and also figuring out when you're not going to do music. Mm -hmm. I, I think that one, mm -hmm. of the, the, one of the most uh, uh, amazing scenes in the movies, I think one of the, the best action sequences I, I've ever ever seen, and it's the, the bathroom fight. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, I, 
and I wish I could say that I helped enhance it with school, but there's no music in it. Yeah. So, so um, I did nothing. Um, but it's it, it's just it really is. I think it's it's about cho- choosing your moments when when you do have music and when you don't. And and I think that that comes down to that, that purity um, really comes down to to Chris, I think, and his mm-hmm. and his taste. Mm-hmm. And the ability to know when when action needs music and when it doesn't. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. think that that's um, that's a very difficult um, it's a very difficult task that. And but he he he's just in all of his movies he's just got very good taste with choosing that so that when the music does come in it really hits you and it's me it's meaningful instead of of just being present. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that was actually one of the things that I, I did want to talk to you about was, um, you know, the choice to use sound versus, versus no sound. Um, because like th- you mentioned the bathroom, uh, fight, which obviously stands out, um, to me as well. But the, the other one that really, for whatever reason, that was so visceral was the, um, the, the car chase after he, uh, uh, got off the motorcycle. Um, I think Ilsa was like shooting at him. I mean, that was like so enhanced by just like the, the, the natural sounds and the roars of the engine and such. But, um, so when you go in to do something like this, um, do you score music for those? And then he makes the decision to take the music out or is there, is it kind of already known? Uh, no, I, I, it's, it's, uh, uh, he, 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 he knows that there isn't going to be music there. Mm -hmm. And I think that there was only one spot where I think I experimented with it was the end of the car chase. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and there was never any music there, but as an experiment, we thought we'd just try it. Sure. Um, but, but, it, but, it, but, and watching it, uh, watching it, um, just for that scene, it, it made sense and it, and it was a, it was quite exciting. But then again, stepping back and looking at the bigger picture, you, you then saw that it, it, it just, it didn't need it. And right, I think that's, right. um, that, mm-hmm. that's, that's the hard thing is choosing when, when you do, and when you don't. And, um, uh yeah he he's just he's very good at that yeah That's, yeah I, do, I guess going off of that uh there are other moments in the score where it is almost is an absence of sound effects and there it's only score and yeah. with, with those uh I, I think there's an example like um well ethan's dream it, it also too. happens in, in the ethan dream yeah. as well when he like when he's sort of uh fantasizing about not fantasizing but like uh dreading what's going to happen uh, yes. If they try to storm um, Solomon's truck, was that like a, an, a conscious conversation you had with Chris and said like, okay, this is just going to be score, or did he sort of come to you and say, I want you to really like you know, write something bombastic here because it's going to be driving the entire like sort of story? Well, that 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 particular scene was the <coughs> was the first piece of music I had written. Oh wow! But it wasn't no. for that scene. Oh okay. Hmm. It, it it was it was. W- when we had been talking about Ethan's story and Ethan's character in this movie, um, this this was the piece that I wrote to Chris to kind of say, "This is what I think the journey is." Okay, um, interesting. And then, and then, uh, and as we talked about before, he doesn't use temp music. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but but um, uh, the, one of the first scenes that I saw was that scene, and he had and he had. Uh, edited it to the piece of music so, oh, so, wow. yeah, yeah. so that that piece of music was really an important dna because you see throughout the movie it appears in several scenes and yeah um yeah i i i, I wish i could take credit for the places of it, but, <laughs> but, uh, but 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 it, it's such a strong opinionated um it's very strong opinionated uh, storytelling there. Absolutely, I think yeah. that he uh, again he had a clear vision for it, and mm-hmm. so, uh, uh, and it's very bold because a lot of a lot of people would say, "Well, where's the sound?" Yeah, um, yeah, and, uh, right. So it's very it's very it's very unique um, filmmaking just to pull it out and yeah, and yeah. let you be invested in it. Mm-hmm. I think it definitely it makes a lot of sense now that you that you tell us that it was sort of. Um, the first piece you wrote because I think that sort of that sound is very much in the DNA of the rest of the movie and just the, the entire tone of the movie almost. It's mm-hmm. very um, the entire tone of the movie sort of seems to reflect 
this existential crisis that Ethan is having. And I guess by basing the score around that original piece, you sort of really convey that in a compelling way. Well, good. And I, and I think also that I, it was, it, it's, the, um, the, it was weirdly enough a very difficult piece to record. We, we spent ages recording it because mm. there's some there's something organic. It's organic, but there's something very yeah. synthetic about it. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't necessarily sound. Um, uh, it doesn't sound natural, which was which is really the charm to do with it because I think it's it's only like an eight chord uh, eight chord progression. Right, right. Mm-hmm. right. It, but but it, there's personality to it, and, and I think that's um, that was just something that just seemed to match the color of the color of this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, in, yeah. In, in in that piece alone, I mean, you get so much of just like the the conflict that he's kind of going through, and not just in the the piece, but in that scene especially. You know, of him just like trying to you know, complete the mission, but like also you know struggling with the fact that he he doesn't want to like hurt people at the same time, like showing the good person he is. Um, in in that kind of like just internal struggle he has throughout the entire film i think is is just beautifully um you know shown throughout that uh, uh that piece mm-hmm. good yeah good well yeah. It, it, it's it's um it was it was hard it was hard to to uh have something represent that but i'm glad mm-hmm. that it feels that way yeah yeah but um kind of going off of that that whole motorcade thing when we jump to the actual uh, uh motorcade scenario uh uh, like the build up up to the crash and everything it was it it was really interesting i was getting kind of like heat vibes from it it was just like the way the whole thing uh, like with the masks and 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 the the um the the build up and and whatnot but i I was curious if like you uh uh, at at any point considered like pulling from from stuff like that if that was even an inspiration um from chris or something like that no, in one word. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I figured not. You know, I was just curious. The, 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 no, I, I think um, there was no. Weirdly enough, the, the, there was no musical inspiration for any of uh, the school. Really oh, interesting. Um, the, 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 the inspiration came from Lalo's theme, right? And okay, and that, yeah, yeah, and, and that uh, and the plot theme. And and everything else really <clears throat> just naturally naturally happened. The the same with the piano motif um, that you hear uh, mm. throughout the movie. It's a very it's a very um, retro feel, and it just it just kind of brought us back to that feeling of the sixties and seventies. And the same with the bongos. I, I think that the yeah. the, whole yeah. percuss- the percussive feel to the whole school to yeah. me was uh, the reference really was. Um, what used to happen in the TV shows, but but turning it on its head and giving it a new way of presenting it. So, mm-hmm. so he, he he was never a, refer, uh, a reference, mm-hmm. but again with that scene, um, I wrote a lot of uh, I, I wrote I wrote an idea, but not not to picture, and um, but but to a rough cut, mm-hmm. and then and then it just kept evolving and and. Um, changing so so no there was no yeah, that was a long description of why no but the, like i mean it's it's so interesting i mean you bring up the bongos and yeah like that was there was such like you start i mean hell you start it off you start off the movie with the bongos i mean it, they're, they're used in such an integral uh way and and it, like you were mentioning it, in such a non-traditional sense um and, and like I, I, when when it really jumped out to me, we're, we're in some of the more just like you know man on man moments between like uh, Henry Cavill and and Tom Cruise, and then like uh, some some of the more um, intense moments. So I, I guess if you could just like talk a little bit about the the decision to really bring the bongos into the forefront in a way that most people wouldn't expect. Um, well, I think it it was it it started off as a slight experiment because I think that again. It's the sheer size of uh, the amount of bongos. We we had the twelve mm-hmm. bongo players, and yeah, and I and, and I think that that was through experimenting with it actually, because it was actually starting off with one bongo, but then the more that got added, and also different ways of playing with it, using bamboo sticks and and drumsticks also. So, um, but but interestingly enough, like the beginning originally, it I wasn't going to do the bongos, and and it was only after 
recording the bongos, then that inspiration made kind of sense. It, it mm-hmm. just naturally said, well, well, welcome to this world of Mission Impossible, but but you didn't necessarily have to, because it's a long time until you hear the theme. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, but it, but it's constantly being hinted at and teased, and then and then it's then it's re- then it's revealed. So mm-hmm. I, I think using the the bongos, um, and I think it's something that Tom and Chris just uh, they uh, they loved right from the beginning. And when recording it, I was sending them dem- demos of of um, how it was being played and filmed, and it just it was a it was a, a DNA that hadn't really featured in any of the other movies. So mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. Um, but but yet it was part of the family, um, and of course yes, it had yeah. bongos in the in the other schools, but it just wasn't used that way. So it just it got everybody excited, and then I'm a percussionist. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, a, well, I'm a failed percussionist. And my timing's <laughs> not. That, my, my timing isn't that good. Um, but um, it um, it was just great to work with all those great musicians, and also you know on top of the twelve bongo players, we also did like, I think fourteen drummers. Um, just okay. to really kind of um, because I think this film is just so epic and large. Yeah. Fact, yes. When, when yeah. you're sitting in there listening to it in the cinema and surround, I wanted to re- make sure that we recorded this score in that environment. Yeah. So that yeah. everything filled that space. No, yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. I think like um, I guess going off of the sort of the grand sound because you said um, you didn't. Uh, like sort of directly, no other score directly inspired this score. Um, I was, and I said this to Griffin, but I, I did get like a, um, while watching the movie especially, I did get like a Dark Knight Rises vibe, where it was like, in the sense that the, like that movie to me feels so uh, grand and like overwhelmingly large. And I think the sound has a lot to do with that. Um, like Hans Zimmer's score is very sort of, um, overwhelming and not like in a bad way just in like very sort of like oh my god the, the stakes of this and i feel like your score sort of achieved a similar thing where like you sort of it's somber but it's also grandiose in a very uh it's just a very interesting sort of combination of of emotions to feel while watching a blockbuster movie um yeah yeah i think it's, well, well, it, it's been interesting those comparisons i i, I you know so, somebody said to me like musically it was to say i i don't I haven't worked on Dark Knight. I I I I don't quite see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I'm missing something. But but I think that um, I think what there is is, is the honesty yes. um, in, yeah. in, in in the filmmaking, and 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 uh, the fact that things things feel more real. And I think the development of of the Batman trilogies was the same. Really, I think what Chris Nolan did was finally make. Um, him a man yes absolutely and, and i think that with fallout the way um chris and eddie have really um st- structured the film and tom is that choosing like fight sequences with no music uh, mm-hmm. and you feel those you feel those sound effects yeah those punches um hit you and, yeah um, and i think choosing moments where you do go small and intimate for those characters um yeah and 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 listen, if if there's a comparison to to Dark Knight, that's you know that's it's great. It's an amazing movie. So. Oh, I mean that in the highest possible like oh, no, no, as no, a no, highest no, possible. No, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that. It's it's the it's it, you know. I, I think that's what needed to be done to to Mission Impossible. And I Absolutely. think that it, yeah. it, it's just totally unexpected. Well, that's the thing. It's such a bold decision just because Rogue Nation was so well received and you could have easily done the exact same thing again and just said, well, we're going to keep like doing these traditional kind of uh, adventure movies because it worked. But uh, you guys, uh, Chris McQuarrie and like just everyone involved sort of decided, no, we're going to test our limits and do something a little more uh, mature almost. And I think... That, that it, it's commendable because it didn't need to happen. You could have, I would have been completely satisfied if they'd just done another movie like uh, Rogue Nation. But yeah, it's just, it's really, really like, risky filmmaking for a, yes. a blockbuster cinema. Well, yeah. it's, an, it's, 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 I, that, it's, yes. And it's like, you know, making films is, it's like when some, when a, when a band gets a number one hit, they've, mm-hmm. got, they've, got, they've got two options. They can, 
do a song that's the same tempo, the same structure, because they know it worked, so why change it? Mm-hmm. Um, or they do something totally different, um, uh, and, that, and that is a big, big risk. Uh, and, um, and I think that's what could have happened with this movie, but I think right from day one, Chris had a clear plan with the movie and uh, and with Tom was to to make something totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would say definitely definitely succeeded in that. Um, Mission accomplished. Yeah, right. Mission accomplished. <laughs> um, I do want to talk a little bit about the um, the villain themes in here because I know we we yeah. last time we we were talking about the plotting theme and you were like, well, we, maybe we could kind of get into a little bit, maybe not. Um, and, and it was just really interesting how the. Um, you know, uh, uh, Walker's theme and, and the, the theme of the syndicate, I, I guess, the, the villain theme, it, it, it is kind of intertwined with the plotting theme in a way. And I was just wondering if you yeah. could kind of like speak on that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, one of the things was I just wanted to make sure that we that the essence of Lalo's music um, and that plot theme, the DNA is really throughout the whole movie. And, yeah. and and the way I kind of wanted to treat it was that that to treat that that melody had been written on that uh, today, mm-hmm. and the, to not do a pastiche or not try to do a parody out of it, it mm-hmm. was to treat that melody as fresh as as it could be. Um, and then so by doing that, I then I then I then just started looking at it and thinking, and, and there was this. this a, a amazing little um, end of the motif in the um, the plot theme, which is just this bomb, bomb, which we all mm-hmm. call the baddie. <laughs> um, and it's right in the middle of of his original plot theme, uh, and it just kind of happens and goes. Mm-hmm. And, and it and it was just pure gold. It's just yeah. um, it's like something that would fit in a a Batman movie. It's just, uh, yeah. there's something dark and menacing about it. It's very kind of, um, opera like. And, yeah. um, it was just, it was, it was that, that, uh, again, it's like, you don't start, I'm sure better composers start right from the day one with a clear plan, but I don't, I, it's, it's, that's very difficult. And I think that mm-hmm. the whole journey you, you, you discover, you discover new things because the movie's constantly evolving also. Right. So, right. so, so um, the cut changes and, and so you're constantly evolving. And, and that was, that was just a great kind of discovery that, so, so that was throughout. And then right from the beginning, the, the whole concept of those famous three notes, the da, 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 ba, da, 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 was to kind of treat it more, more contemporary and i just thought it was just the kind of focus on just three notes so yeah from the beginning it's it, you're really just focusing on that so it's not becoming too melod- melodic yeah and it's the, yeah choose your moments because it's like it's like the whole um paris chase it's choose your moments to do that theme so that the fact when when it happens it hits the it hits the audience and you yeah. and and you have that 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 amazing feeling of hearing that Mission Impossible theme, so it it just it it, it hit your heart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it kind of works that you use like sort of uh, parts of the theme rather than the whole yeah. theme itself. Yeah. Uh, throughout the film, just considering what the film's about, in that the movie's sort of about Ethan Hunt testing what it means to be Ethan Hunt, and so by like sort of like using uh, like fractions of the theme. And then building, 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 building until the end you get the full bombastic theme again uh, when he sort of found himself. I think that uh, enhances the sort of the the emotional journey that the story is sort of taking the audience on. Um, and I think that, that probably would have been undercut if you had like this very confident sort of, you know, theme song throughout the whole thing, very melodic theme song. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think the, using the, 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 the three notes was... Yeah brilliant just really really enhanced the story yeah agreed but it, but it was again it wasn't kind of it wasn't it wasn't planned it was it was more it was more weirdly enough tom's character you know ethan tom's character um <laughs> it, was, it was it was just that's to me it was just that's what was calling out right yeah well you and, know, and it, it, it almost functions as like a um 
as like an Ethan Hunt theme per se. Because I mean, like the Mission Impossible theme, I guess you could argo ar- argue is the is the theme of like the the character and whatnot. But it's like it, that I kind of look at that as more of like that's the theme of the franchise. That's you know that's the Mission Impossible yes. theme. Whereas like using those three notes and especially in most of the scenes where it's like featured prominently it's just ethan um it it, weirdly enough like to me stuck out as like an ethan hunt theme per se yes well i i i think that um i i think i had i had started off writing an ethan hunt theme um Uh and i know Hmm. there's been some in in the movies um, but but to me, the Ethan Hunt theme has always been the Mission Impossible theme. Right. Yeah. Um, so so it was why why complicate matters. Right. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and also it, it it is a good theme, uh, yeah. and I think that um, it's what we associate with him. So what why try to it would be like doing Terminator and trying to write a different theme. I, I, yeah. It, it it's a good it's it works and the and the audience can relate to it immediately so yeah mm-hmm. yeah I think so, um the best. I was gonna say um just speaking of like sort of themes and working with uh, previous ideas established in the series I think a lot of this film is sort of tying up uh, sort of loose threads from the like the previous five films yeah. and really just sort of giving uh, it feels very like probably the most conclusive of all the films uh for that reason and i think one thing that stood out to me was um because they bring back julia who was uh prominently in the third film and but her role is sort of she fulfills a different role in this film than she did in uh three obviously and so how did you go about like because she has like a little sort of uh, piece of music associated with her well, I, I feel i noticed um, how do you go about writing music for her that reflects the change in their relationship uh, well, since the third uh, film? Uh, well, her, her, her influence really is it was just it was actually just adding a different counter melody on top of 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 um, his journey piece, which was that first piece that we were talking about mm. mm-hmm. in, um, in the the with the police. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so so again, all the roads go back to the to the, the first road really and i think yeah again it was it was it was trying to i just wanted to keep it everything related to ethan and yeah. and, and and keep it that way because then we, we we're we're then still emotionally attached to his journey so yeah yeah well i think doing that tying there's like a tying it to like a counter melody kind of really like, like enhanced the, the melancholic sort of feeling that you get watching. Cause you know that yeah. they care about each other and you know that uh, he's very important to Ethan, but then you also know that it just can't work. And so I think by tying it to this sort of t- tying it to Ethan's journey, it made it feel more cohesive as a part of the story. Cause it easily could have felt as low. Okay. She's just suddenly in the movie. And if you haven't seen the third movie, you don't really know what's going on, but the music yeah. kind of conveys that there's this history and it is bittersweet. And I, I, I don't know. I thought that was just brilliant. It really stood out to me yeah. watching the film. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I absolutely agree. Now, there, there, okay. So there's two more things I want to quickly get into here just about the film overall. I'll talk about some of the best moments, I guess. So, so I guess, Lauren, what are – I know you mentioned this in the, the previous interview, the um, – the the Tom Cruise running sequence that that yes. tire chasing was one of your favorite moments. Are there any others that really stand out to you? And then on top of that, what were some of your favorite moments to score? Well, I think we, we, uh, yeah, they're, they're all they're all it's like saying what's your which one's your favorite child? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you're, that's true. You're fully, you're fully invested in them, and and right, I, I yeah. think what, one of the hardest um, was the mission briefing. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh, and 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 I think selfishly because it's the hardest it's prob- that probably is the most enjoyable because it, it was the hardest one to do and mm-hmm. and uh, because there's a lot of information and musically you don't want to be taking away or detra- or distracting the audience with it mm-hmm. so um, it, it's it, I, I enjoyed it because I knew right from the beginning this this cue was going to be the hardest one, and I'd be at that until the last minute. <laughs> so, yeah. 
So that's uh, it's probably it's probably I know that you probably want me to say the halo jump or something. Big. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's it's interesting though, is because you know the the moments that it, this is you know you watch interviews with other composers as well. It's like it's always the the more intricate moments that are the not only like the most uh, difficult to score, but when you get it right, it's like that much more rewarding. Yeah. Yes. Well, I th- I think finally yes, and also. You're working. You're working hard with your with your director and editor, and 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 you're constantly is experimenting with different ideas, and and then it it doesn't work, and then all of a sudden it just it clicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it's <coughs> it's um it's good, but but you know the, the running sequence is great because you just you 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 know you sit there and that's when that side shot happens and the big orchestra oh, plays. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you go. It's Tom Cruise, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then and then and then the end of that scene with, with the helicopter. That's my favorite part. I yeah. With uh, just, with Henry again, it's 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 just overwhelming. And again, the, the Chris always wanted it to, to feel like that was the end of the the feeling that that's the end of the movie. Hmm. Yeah. So it was um it was great that, but but then also. You get fun times where, where for the end credits we had the choir singing Mission Impossible and Latin. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's that's fun, and also I just think it's it's it hadn't been done before. So, right. but but yeah. That, but yeah, it's it's very difficult choosing the choosing a um, your your perfect scene. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. Well, and you bring up the choir, and I thought it was really interesting i mean you you use the choir in the halo jump very fittingly and then also anytime he's kind of like you know running around the church and that was those were like really nice touches that were put in there and like you said yeah like it just had you never heard that in a mission impossible film before and then it also was just adding to this like you know grandiose feel that the film was kind of presenting yeah good well and i think also it's 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 um it it really it's about pace and and it's a long scene that and it's a difficult one because yeah. you there's a, there's a lot of back and forth and and I think scenes like that are always very complicated because you you don't want to lose your energy going mm-hmm. back um and forth so yeah it was it was um that's that's a good one the halo jump halo jump was very complicated also because mm. again you're dealing with all those sound effects and then um um, uh, yeah. The the information you're also being given is about uh, about the, the the distance to the crowd. You're being told <laughs> the actual distance, so you can't be um, you can't be distracting the viewer from that. So yeah, they're all they're all um, they're all as equally as as favourite as each other. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, <laughs> very I, diplomatic I answer. Yes, very <laughs> diplomatic answer. Answer. Very fitting way, I think, to end this spoiler conversation. Uh, thanks again, Lauren, for 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 coming on and talking to us more in depth about some of the best, uh, you know, moments in the film. We really, really appreciate it. Well, uh, it's it's been a real pleasure, but it's also just lovely. Lovely hearing how enthusiastic you are about the, the movie, and, and that oh, it's, yeah. just, it's um, I think I think you forget that there's just thousands of people who've just worked on it for so mm-hmm. long, and mm-hmm. and and it, it's um, with with all one intention in making this just um, this film really, and I listen, it's like all movies, Every, everybody's yeah. working hard to try to to figure out how do you make a good movie and, and a good story, so. It's it's a it's a massive massive um, uh, team effort and and when it's right it's 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 amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I uh, a mission accomplished on that one. Just to end on another <laughs> pun. <laughs> awesome. I certainly am going to be very. Uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be a little disappointed if you're not if you're not scoring the next one. I'm going to be very honest. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, I you've set so the bar too. so high uh, when it Agreed. comes to these scores. Agreed. Well, I. I too would be, but uh, I would too. Would be upset, but, <laughs> but but you know the thing is, is that it, it, it's you you, you know I I think it's been um, I'm very thankful that I got invited into this family, um, mm-hmm. to this movie and 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 I totally um, I, I like many things I've worked on in the past. You just always know you shouldn't you don't expect to be brought back because yeah because um, you. Uh, <laughs> The, these films have to change, and they have to they have to evolve, 
and um, I, I think that it's some sometimes some people don't aren't able to uh, change, and you may look at it and go, oh, I don't know what else to do. I I did the best I could on the last mm-hmm. one. But mm-hmm. It's always a difficult one, and it's um, but. It, it's like anything. It's always, it's always nice to be invited to the party. At least, uh, <laughs> at, least, at least get the invite. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, yeah, seriously, uh, thanks again. It was it was great chatting you more in depth. Perfect. Well, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm glad that we got to catch up after, um, after <laughs> you actually saw it. So that was fantastic. And that's it. There you go, guys. That's the spoiler discussion. Hopefully you found some more insight into his process for creating the music of Mission Impossible Fallout. I know we certainly did, and we had a great time talking with Lorne. He's a fantastic guy, and I'm just so privileged to be able to say that he was able to talk to us not once but twice regarding one of the best movies of the year and one of the best scores of the year. But anyways, guys, if you like this video, be sure to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more movie and television-related content on a weekly basis. Be sure to share this around with all of your friends. We want to get it out there. It's a great discussion, and we think more people need to hear it. You can like Men Vs. Movies on Facebook and follow us on Twitter simply by searching Men Vs. Movies. And lastly, guys, if you like me specifically and you like what I have to say, you can always give me a follow on Twitter at Griff Schiller. All right. That's going to do it for this interview slash discussion, I guess. (laughs) Anyways, until next time, take care.